Now, the fact that it upset them is good. Good, 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 good. I take that for granted. I, I want my readers to be upset all the time, time. Does comes from using two actions, one against the other. I was very lucky to grow up in a society where there were no classes of any sort. Yeah. The two double action gives you the emotion of multitude. Ah, yes. Which we can get into. This is the way it is for everybody. That's what the emotion of multitude is. Feeling of universality, archetypal. My dear concern is conversation in which I make the discoveries. Now, very few people want to know anything. I make most of my discoveries while talking, not while writing. Well, for example, when I look up the word read and find that it means to guess. I couldn't bear to multi-locational art. Anything I've ever That's fascinating. I have uh, no desire to move into the world that I understand so well. <laughs> so Xerox, the electric thing, is a complete revolution. And that's precisely why... It and it's away from the eye. I do not wish... It's all back to the ear again. Move into it. It's all acoustic. <laughs> because I understand it, I much prefer the old mildewed world of the 18th century book. Fantastic, the unconsciousness of our Western world with regard to I the a rowboat on the Assiniboine and a sailboat on the Red River, and they were about half a mile apart. Part, part, part. They feel they already know anything, all they need to know, they already know. So if you have anything to say at all, it's going to be very upsetting to them. I, so, on the way to school, I... Our children have to do with just looking and being in their environments. Fantastic. Exhausting. On the way to school, I could stop off and row my boat for a while on the one river. And when I went after school, after I finished delivering my papers, I could go down to the Red River and sail. And I did these things all the time. How old were you then? from that world of uh, the visual orientation of man 
all the laws, all the philosophy, all the individuality, all the civilization, literally civilization, and, uh, the idea of the citizen that grew out of that world, finished right now. It isn't going, it has gone. We just have a little aftershine left right now, it's, it's gone. I'm not being pessimistic, I'm reporting something that happened some time ago. It's just a, we're just involved in a mopping up operation. But the, the disappearance of the private person, the private family, you can see, with the disappearance of the private person, everybody suddenly feels that private ethics are meaningless. And we call it permissiveness. And we don't feel we have the right to punish anybody anymore. Because society is really to blame. Why, how can we punish anybody if we don't believe that anybody's responsible for anything? As a small child, I had, was told at the dinner table over and over again by my father, would you get up and say that to a group of men? Okay, so and, because you said things like Yes, that. because uh, unconventional things. Do you remember one of them? No, I don't remember a single one. But they, they would be, uh, they're no more outrageous than the statements I make today in my books. They're back. In other words, you're perfectly aware. Think of it this way. It's like a big cocktail party. Here, bits of dialogue here, stories over here. This is even better because people can come back and go through it again. And they'll see something new and they'll hear something new. I was thinking that today we could talk about where you work. Well, I think we'll see the way we work. No, I know. But, uh, 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 it's called uh, transparency. I stack one thing on top of another on top of another. Look at them all simultaneously. That's how you work now. Do you well, always, always work, work that way? Always work that way. I mean, uh, how did you write the Gutenberg Galaxy, for instance? Mm -hmm. It's a long time ago. About, uh, about uh, happiness or about the childhood and so on. Um, when I was a kid, I spent a lot of my time building boats. Oh, yeah? Really? Yes, I was a carpenter. I thought I was an engineer and I wanted to be an engineer. Yeah. Well, at least there. From childhood, I was in that position of outraging my own father. He was in the second year, second year of a five-year course. Your own environment. My own environment. Tate uh, ceases to be lineal at speed, by the way. Happiness to me is um, something I am not much interested in, I can tell you that. At, at no period of my life was I interested in being happy. I was very interested in getting on with what I was interested in. And I, in practice, that turned out to be a source of considerable happiness, in the sense of satisfaction. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of my time building boats. He was actually a pretty handy guy. He built, for example, sailboats. I used to have the plans for one of them. It's gone for a long time now, but I remember the name, How to Build a Racer. And when he got to Cambridge, he was a rower. My oar. Got into rowing. Well, you, you can't sail on those rivers anyway. The bridges are too low. There's too many of them. And uh, we're very close because uh, there's so many things we were reading that we found occasion to argue and discuss. We went through the Chesterton stage. talking when I noticed the milk wagons going by in the morning, it was about four or five in the morning, they were talking. And uh, we were still talking when I noticed the milk wagons going by in the morning, it was about four.
That's, I think, true. Except, again, that I had luck. I met people, too. But uh, it, it was mainly a literary uh, activity. A book by Gilbert Keith Chesterton, What's Wrong with the World? Yes, uh, handed to me uh, on a Winnipeg street by Tom Easterbrook. I became aware of what the church claimed to be. Describe your conversion to Roman Catholicism in 1938 as a long pilgrimage and a solitary one done entirely by reading. That's, I think, true. No. No, I had no religious belief at that time at all. I was an agnostic. Mm -hmm. But I finally decided that if the church is what it says it is, you were also told how to test that hypothesis. Uh, he said to me, uh, I hated this book, I think you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to do a cover on Marshall. So they entered into the high church lunch on the top floor and all that kind of stuff. And all the guys that had the, the departments came in and he had to do his, you know, dog and pony show and things like that. I was there. But our lives are actually conducted at mythic find things by deduction then. And the head So as you live in smaller and smaller space, electrically, why, uh, things that... At electric speeds, nothing in the USA makes sense. All times present. The house I grew up in, I figured I was going to Uh, stand with, uh, uh, yeah, I figured I was going to ask, and it was a house that actually was occupied by a man who was crocked in the air there. We were together one night, all of this church was done, and he asked me what street I was going up on, I said, the big dad. What happened to five or seven? He said, I did not be five or seven. Isn't that me? I'm the old man. How much of your junior age? Well, I guess it'd be at least 25 years old. How old were you then? I would have been uh, 15, 14, 15, 16. Was you playing alone or? Oh no, I had lots of. I had nothing off, but I had them. Uh, there was always my brother and his friends and my friends on the He's same street. He's younger than you. Two years younger. Yeah. Yeah. And we used to we used to play baseball. We had our own baseball team, our own hockey team on the street, and we would enter competition with other teams and, and, uh, uh, and so on in the local competitive leagues. And uh, I was a self-paw pitcher for the, uh, the Winnipeg Fireflies, a uh, left-handed pitcher. Oh, you're left-handed? I'm left-handed, and I was taught right-handedness, so I got crossed up uh, at that point of my schooling. I was shifted back into right-handedness, which I think has probably had some strange effects on my life. Yeah. But... Uh, it's like making you into a literary... Yeah. And uh, it was easy to hate dad. But I had never, I'd never, um, my mother and father didn't get along very well. And uh, 
this was itself a kind of education because to my brother and myself it seemed perfectly obvious to, the, to, to us that they were infants that had grown up and um, that uh, they didn't know how to get along with anybody really and uh, they were just uh, un uh, immature. Uh, this the ordinary milieu uh, of events never impressed me very much. I always assumed, I, I feel this very really strong, I always assumed that it was something that I would shake off and leave behind. I never felt that it had any meaning for me. Yes, I saw a great deal of my father, he was a very sociable man. I believe that always felt many, many, that the immediate milieu of which I existed. Many, many hours. It was a kind of group that was a kind of accident that was absolutely important. She carried the burden all the time, and uh, she didn't care much for her. And uh, it was easy to hate Dad because he was so permissive. He was also a fiddler, a uh, great fiddler in Ontario. When people say McLuhan is the enemy of print, they seem to forget that he has spent the last 35 years of his life in minute analysis of the printed page and in the minute teaching of kids how to spell. They were playing 2,500 years in reverse. The whole, everything that happened from the 5th century uh, So the onward. eyes are put back with the rest of the century? Yes. And, uh, um, this area that we're in, what do you call it mostly? Um, I would mostly call this Osborne Village. This could be anywhere in Winnipeg, Western Wells, with regard to the rowboat on the Assiniboine, by the Assiniboine on the Red River. Yeah. Well, of course, that is where I brought up in Fort William, which is not too unlike. Well, well actually, well, well, actually, it's a totally different terrain. But the uh, soil is different. Yeah, it's not like this. I agree. This is uh, now this is. Of course, this is uh, of Saskatoon. This could be anywhere in Winnipeg, by the Assiniboine on the Red River. River and they were about half a mile apart. Park, park, park. After school. We were about a mile, a while, on the one river. And when I went after school, after I finished delivering my papers, I could go down to the Red River and sail. I remember, you know, Marshall talking like that uh, at NYU. on the same uh, stand with uh, uh, the uh, etc. editor, uh, the guy from California, Hayakawa. Uh, I, I, I knew Hayakawa. We used to go fishing together in San Francisco Bay, but um, it turned out that Marshall had delivered newspapers to his family. A rose is a rose is a rose is a rose. She's doing that tomato can trick. In Canada. It's not simple, is it? It's not uh, all one thing or another thing. may be means eventually of an orchestration of these faculties, an orchestration of media, so that they will not uh, batter each other to bits and batter us to bits. The normal human condition is television. So the hunter, the hunter learns by alerting every sense and training his perceptual life. And instead of putting something... It's a rather uh, luminous phrase, or very small.
1939. The name McLuhan is uh, probably rather opaque, but the name Marshall is less opaque. It is a rather uh, luminous phrase, or Marichal. Marichal is somebody, is a marshal, a war marshal. We don't understand information movement and image making as warfare at all. We call this advertising. A war marshal. Um, I, I have a, a memory for page numbers. It's funny. You do? Yeah. It's the Ken Stanley numbers. That could be. Do you know your famous quote? You want to be a book where you page 69 or 98. Oh, no. I, I, 96. <laughs> 69 is 96. And they're complimentary, you see. Oh. 69, 96. <laughs> now, she passed away four years ago, a week shy of her, for her 96th birthday. My dad, of course, passed away at 69. 69 is 96. And they're complimentary, you see. Which uh, Hayakawa, uh, uh, during that speech, said he didn't believe that that ever happened. Well, I was when I grew up in a brick building. And there were about six or eight of us sitting in Howard Gossage's office with McLuhan sitting around a table. At that same time, over across town, I think in the Hilton Hotel, there was a big meeting run by Dr. Hayakawa, the uh, yes, man of this is... <laughs> thousand people there, and so someone asked McLuhan, uh, what, um, what do you think of the uh, Hayakawa uh, conference? And so he said, well, uh, I'm sure it's fine. A rose is a rose is a rose is a rose. She's doing that tomato can trick of just repeating the same word until you suddenly realize it is not a semantic mm -hmm. entity but an acoustic linguistic entity. Rapid, by the way, magic is itself a kind of repetition. Rapid, by the way, magic is itself a kind of repetition. Rapid, by the way, magic is itself a kind of repetition. And uh, print is a magical Why? We didn't have separate rooms at that time, and we would divide the, the receivers. And uh, we'd find a very good point in the crystal for a program, and we'd fall asleep with the <laughs> receiver on the pillow and our ear against it. But, uh, among other things, meant leisure. Which school means leisure. Uh, school. So, the persons who go to school are really people who don't have to work. Understand the language and grammars of men. On the other hand, we have increasingly tended to turn the classroom into a place of work. You're Cambridge University, right? The undergraduates of Cambridge are appalling. Among others. Country, there are two brightness. But, but no, they're in Canada. No, more than anything. You went to Cambridge University, right? Among others. That means you completed school, right? I went, I completed several schools. Oh. I, did, I did two PAs and two MAs and one PhD. This is the campus of the University of California in Los Angeles. Well, why, if you say school should be bypassed? Because I regard this utter leisure. Among others. This was the Broadway campus of the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg. Today, no one of the citizens is aware that this is the origin of the Winnipeg School of Communication. Among its members, Samuel, Don, Ichi, Hayakawa, Irving, Goffman, William, Ormond, Mitchell, Rupert Clendon. And you remember the Irishman who said, seeing a brawl going on, sure, and is this a private fight or can anyone get in on it? And the Irish do enjoy a fight. Lodge.
Horace Noel Fieldhouse. Henry Wilkes Wright writes the moral standards of democracy is the 168th of 168. Here is a quote from the 1925 book. And these, these agencies, agencies themselves, themselves are, are extensions in the physical world of those bodily organs of intercommunication and personal association possessed by every human being. But I find them very exciting things to investigate. They are, as you know, parts of our own bodies, enlarged and extended into the, to create human environments. The, uh, any technology is a part of ourselves uh, acting as a, a new environment. A man who may have subli a man who may have subliminally influenced McLuhan. He would walk over the Osborne Street Bridge. Ten classes taught by Lodge, Fieldhouse, Wright, and others at the downtown Broadway campus, currently invisible. 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 Asking a question about this guy, Marshall McLuhan, the guy uh, that that hall's named after. No. The gears in reverse. The huge smog of inky. Which one of the biggest people? Yeah. Oh. Did you feel? I so found I was, for example, at Cambridge, I was amazed to discover that uh, a large proportion of the undergraduates they were uh, 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 like uh, high school kids from Canada. civilized society is the right to be protected against the consequences of its own stupidity. Now, what he was saying was that the ordinary modes of human living and endeavor create nothing but chaos. And if you want order, you have first start with the fact of human stupidity and greed and nonsense and put them in order. Do you, do you mean it totally seriously when you say that your books can be open at any page? Any page, anywhere, yes. You're at the top of the intellectual tree. Winnipeg, classic Winnipeg. You gotta love where someone in Winnipeg was like, this McLuhan kid's not gonna make grade seven. Is it a good sign for all of us that you failed grade six? Well, 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 I never heard about that.
I think all of McLuhan's ideas had just sort of run their course. The show, which will uh, ensure a great deal of popularity and uh, representativeness to the show. And if you were a student in 1972 or three, say. If you can think of a sponsor or a who ignores the audience. Are you gonna take Marshall McLuhan's class? Oh, I don't know, it's kind of passe. Um, maybe the CBC in Canada. So that means a, a big bureaucratic um, organization which uh, feels it's quite above the needs of the audience. And uh, so it creates a great many unpopular shows. He undergoes brain surgery and the doctors remove a benign tumor the size of a lemon. And that affected his thinking. How could it not affect your thinking? <clears throat> I wouldn't say they're especially interesting. They're just unpopular. <laughs> And he was left actually unable to read. 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 And uh, to what extent the BBC is in the same boat, I don't know, but you may you might be able to comment. You I did fail great I No, I no, I didn't. Our research made an error? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I never failed any grade ever, but uh, anyway, the, I, that doesn't mean I did superbly well at school because I wasn't that interested. McLuhan looks at Canadian politics. I think so. That's a, that's fair enough. Okay, so you say the Gladstone was that confusion corner. I've, I've seen an aerial photograph of it. It's where... Up of electricity, telegraph, and so on, one of the strange effects on writing was an understanding for the first time of the creative process. Uh, I used that phrase and maybe it was the message on the radio. Let me reassure you people, I once spoke in 1957, I once spoke in 1957, TV is in June to the radio car broadcasters, uh, to the radio people, I was a radio car. At that time they were terrified of the effect, coming effects of television. The radio medium is unique. That is where the action is, it's in the gap. Well, yeah, but it can be at the cost of, um... Of acceptance. Yes, and I never wanted to be accepted. I still don't. Because you can only be accepted by people who have lost interest in what you're saying. Then the media is the message. 